Why do I keep doing this to myself? You couldn't just do a simple paint job, could you? What's up guys, welcome back to Full Throttle RC. Today we're putting a new body on the Arma Notorious. Before we get into all of those lines I have on there, let's go over how I got it mounted. This is the Chevy Colorado body from Proline, made for crawlers and trail trucks. To begin, I drilled the holes for the body mounts. I swapped in the Proline screw type mounts a while back on my Notorious. I had to remove the front bumper, but I'll probably figure something out to replace that. The main modifications came in the rear. I had to cut a good bit out of the rear of the body. The entire tailgate section was cut out to fit the wing, and I actually had to trim the wing a hair too for everything to fit. After some modification though, I'm really impressed with how well the body fits. It looks pretty sweet sitting up there. You can see I have my design laid out already. I went a little overboard on this one, but basically I scrolled through Instagram looking at different designs for inspiration and came up with this. Most of it is free handed and then I used templates to transfer it to the other side. I used a couple printouts to trace the circuit board design. It's kind of hard to explain what I'm trying to do with that, so I'll just have to show you. I started applying the liquid mask, but I have one more coat to put on. Most people apply this with a spray gun, but I wanted to show that it can easily be applied with a brush as well. I know not everyone has access to a spray gun and air compressor, so you might have never thought of using this stuff. Just make sure to use a big brush, putting even coats and letting it dry completely between coats. When using a brush, I normally put three or four coats. I'm pretty sure watching me cut along all of these lines would be pretty boring, so I'll skip ahead to when I'm ready to spray the first color. So, after an insane amount of following lines with a hobby knife, I'm ready to spray. The only tip I can give on cutting masking is take your time, use a sharp blade, and don't hesitate. Make confident passes. Now let's spray my first round of black. Three light coats wrap up the first round. I say first round of black because I still have black to spray in other areas, but it needs to be done in layers for the effect I'm going for. It should make more sense as we start adding other colors. You see me unmasking the next area that'll be sprayed. These parts will get a black fade around the edges. I got two light coats of the fade around the edges done, and I don't even have to unmask anything else for the next color, which is Proline Pearl Purple. I'll spray two or three coats and move on. So now we get to the interesting part. I knew exactly what I was going for with the main graphics, but I didn't want just a solid background color. I came across some geometric patterns that I thought would look pretty cool, and tried to replicate that. It ended up being a bit more abstract than I planned, but it should still look pretty cool. The first color for my geometric pattern is a dark gray, so I unmask all of those areas and start spraying. The second color is a lighter gray, almost silver. I originally planned to use a non-metallic light gray, but I didn't notice I didn't have any, so this silver color will work. I had to put a few extra coats on that because the silver is a light color. I also had a little airbrush trouble, which is why it's important to keep your airbrushes clean. I only have one more color for my pattern, but it's white, so I'm gonna move on to the rest of the graphic. I'm only unmasking a few spots to add a black shadow first. After I add the shadows, I'm backing the silver with a little black as well to prevent the next color from showing through the silver. That next color is fluorescent yellow, or as I call it, highlighter yellow. I've been wanting to try out one of these fluorescent colors for a while, and I think it'll look pretty good here. 
It'll go on the main striping as well as the window trim. I went with four coats of the yellow. The fluorescent colors are almost transparent, so they don't cover very well. And I also wanted it to be as bright as possible. To get that brightness, it needs to be backed with white. I still have some white to add to the background pattern, so I'll back it with that and then back the entire body with a solid white. So I went outside and backed the entire body with two coats of white and then a light coat of black. While I was out there, I cut the protective film on the outside to use as a mask to spray a few sections with a matte clear. All I have left to do is remove the window mask and add the light and grill decals. I may tint the windows in the future, but we'll see how it looks first. Needless to say, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. It's definitely one of the most involved paint jobs I've ever done, but it's also probably the happiest I've been with a finished body. All of the lines are really clean, and the circuit design inside the graphics came out exactly how I wanted. Only thing left to do now is scratch it up. No, obviously I don't want to scratch it up. I saw Proline is now making some body protectors. Basically just some plastic pieces that protect the Lexan when the truck flips on its lid. So I might pick some of them up to keep this body looking good. Other than that, let me know how you think it came out in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed or dislike the video if you didn't. Either way, it helps the channel. I have some other projects coming up, so subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And as always, thanks again for watching. Peace.